How are you doing, Tara? I'm doing all right. How are you? 17 years, Tara. I know. I mean, not me. I don't know how many years I've been doing this. Every year I do this. I don't know how many years. Seven. Seven? Okay. I came in around the 2010 the anniversary. Yeah. Been That's been like longer than some of the people watching have been alive. Yes. Which, why are you, if you're 17, why are you watching? Where are your parents? I know. It's so wonderful. My, my oldest nephew just turned 18. And we had the whole family over. And he was, I know. I know. And he was looking at my whole setup in here. And he's like, what's all this for? I'm like, oh, for the web show I do. And he's like, you're on a web show? And I'm like. Don't do that. I'm like, you're technically old enough to watch it now. But please don't. It will ruin your image of Antara. Don't, don't, t don't I, you don't tell your family members about this stuff. Well, my sister and my other nephew know because I lived at that house for a year. My, so my other sister and my, my younger nephew, Pat, always wanted to watch. And I'm like, no, you're 10 years old. It's not appropriate for you. Absolutely not. Like, no. How long ago was that? Three years. So in another five years, if we're still doing this. I know. Hey. Well, and my mom thought it was fucking hysterical. So. Yeah, I was really nervous <laughs> tonight when we went to Missouri. I did the show from his mom's condo at one point. And it, and it was the first time I met her. I was a little nervous that it would, like, she'd, like, put an omerta on the marriage. But she was cool with it. It's, it, it really has changed doing this. Like, when I first started telling people, I make videos on the Internet for, for a living. And they're like, oh, you make porn. And now it's like, oh, you're a Nazi. And I'm like, no, <laughs> no, no, no. Now they're like, oh, so you hate women and Muslims. Yeah, no. Also, in addition to being uh, 17 years, I just got back from Con Bravo. And Yay. I'm going to show you. This is, let me see. Uh, this is from 2007. This is Jess. And she does... She's a very big fan of the D20 Live we do at Com Bravo, and she she also does these really cool. She made this for me. She made a Grady. This is a pixel Grady. This is a much better Grady than you. Don't do that. You'll give him low self esteem. Because this Grady will actually come on camera when I need him to. Don't make him feel bad, Grady. You're beautiful. There's no replacing you, and that's a beautiful Grady, but it's a different Grady. Absolutely. No, you're not. And she made this, and for, for you, she made she made this uh, this hippo, hippo lamp, and it glows in the dark too. I can't turn out the lights to show you, but the the white parts glow in the dark. We're going to see hippos this weekend. It turns out Philadelphia has an aquarium that has like a huge hippo display. With like the underwater hallway and everything, so I'm like, Dan, why are we not Dan, at that all the time? If she tries to rent a truck, stop her. <laughs> Seventeen years, everybody. We've got stories, and you know what? People are getting pissed. Oh, the political stories! Don't do those. Well, you know what? If they stop doing stupid shit, we'll stop talking about them. Because this week we have a fucking doozy. Uh oh. Each week, Catherine, ready to bet our audience go out worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck Wrong. Now, last week was kind of, shall we say, hectic at the White House. Yeah. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. It's a little busy over there. A little busy. But um, among other things that happened, someone without any hacking skill, I want, I want to stress this, there was no hacking. Oh in, yes. There was no hacking involved here. None. No, no kind of. Zero. Yeah. Who's egg hacking? There was old American stupidity. Yep. Um, just one dude and an iPhone managed to completely wreak havoc what? 
why are you still defaulting to Firefox, you fucking bitch? All right. Uh, White House officials tricked by email prankster. A self-described email prankster in the UK fooled a number of White House officials into thinking he was other officials, including an episode where he convinced White House official tasked with cybersecurity that he was Jared Kushner. Tasked with, tasked with what? <clears throat> cybersecurity. Right. And received that official's private email address unsolicited. Luckily, cybersecurity has like nothing to do with Shut up, Chris Cuomo. <laughs> Tom, we are arranging a bit of a soiree toward the end of August, the fake Jared Kushner on an Outlook account wrote to the official White House email account of Homeland Security Advisor Tom Bossert. It would be great if you could make it. Should be a great evening. Bossert wrote back, thanks, Jared. With a promise like that, I can't refuse. Also, if you ever need it, my personal email is redacted. Blur. Bossert did not respond to CNN's request for comment. comment. Further, we had fun with Scaramucci. You had fun with everybody. Um, masquerading as a uh, former White House Chief, Chief of Staff, Rince Priebus, the prankster emailed Scaramucci's official email account using a mail.com account. I promised myself I would leave my hands mud free, wrote the fake Priebus. But after reading your tweet today that stated how, Soon we will learn who in the media has class, who has it, has pushed me to this. The very real Scaramucci responded, you know what you did. We all do, even today. But rest assured, we were prepared. A man would apologize. What did he do? I mean, if I assume, he, I assume it's because Scaramucci thinks Priebus was the one leaking everything, but I prefer fun conspiracy theories, so I did. Even better. Scaramucci, who was until yesterday the White House Director of Communications. Um, For like a whole minute and a half, he had that job. In another exchange, Scaramucci was hoodwinked by the same prankster pretending, pretending to be the ambassador to Russia designate John Huntsman Jr. Quote, whose head should roll first, the bogus Huntsman asked from a Gmail account on Friday before previous termination had been announced. Maybe I can help things along somewhat. Both of them responded the real Scaramucci in an apparent reference to both Priebus and White House Senior Advisor Steve Bannon. <laughs> Huntsman himself was also tricked with the prankster pretending to be Eric Trump, the president's son. Thanks for the thoughtful note. The ambassador designate wrote to fake Eric Trump. Russia will be a challenging but no doubt rewarding assignment. The fake Eric Trump responded to this, with this suggestion. Maybe we could have dad sat on a horse, top off, giving the full pu Putin. He's in better shape than his suit suggests. No, he's not. At no point did anyone realize these emails were not coming from their official accounts. And like, if this is someone you'd like to think, say you're anybody, working with someone they've emailed you before mm -hmm. so you think you'd recognize like it would be in your contacts mm -hmm. so maybe you'd ask like there's a different email address than i have from you is this the one i should be using from now on i i mean why I, isn't your email address at whitehouse.gov because, you know, we really came down on Hillary Clinton over those records, not See, using the White House servers. So we don't want to be those guys. I want to point out something. All I do is I run a stupid Internet web show. Yeah. OK, here's my operational security. Just basic shit. I look at the actual email address, not where it says, but I actually look at the headers on emails. Yeah, all those little word mm -hmm. stuff, those mean things. Um, if I get a private message or, or something on Skype or on Twitter or something else, and something looks a little weird to me, I will pick up my phone and I will text the person, like, did you send me this shit? And they'd be like, no, dog. And I'm like, well, what do you do? 
or especially when I get a click on this. Yeah. Basically, I have better operational security than the fucking White House. To play videos and yell at Doctor Who. Yeah. I mean, but you know what? It's fine. It's not like they're dealing with whether we fucking declare war on people or anything. They managed to get the fucking... The head of cybersecurity. The head of cybersecurity. And the guy who's he about... He might have some questions about why you're emailing him from a not White House Gov account. And the man who is about to become ambassador to Russia. Yeah. They, they had him like that. Well, honestly, complete obliviousness to online hijinks is probably a plus in that job at this point. <sighs> I feel safe. Don't you feel safe? I feel safe. Totally. Speaking of feeling safe, this is, you might want to turn my volume down a little bit. I can hear you. I can hear me in my headphones. Because oh, I can like barely hear you. What? Eh? There we go. Um... So, uh, speaking of feeling safe, McDonald's! Nothing bad happens at a McDonald's, right? Literally almost every two weeks on this show, something bad happens at McDonald's. Deputies search for man who may have blown up McDonald's bathroom. Are we talking like the euphemism? Like... <laughs> That's up? what I thought, too. The bathroom? Like he had one too many sausage <laughs> McMuffins? That's what I thought, too. I honestly did. Investigators have released surveillance video of a man they think was most likely behind the explosion at the McDonald's on 6820 North Orange Blossom Trail in Orlando. Orange County Sheriff's Office says the man who was pacing back and forth enters the McDonald's, goes into the bathroom, leaves the restaurant, and then there is an explosion. Explosion happened in the men's room, originating in between the stalls. The restaurant was evacuated shortly after 2.30 p.m. Why? Why would you... Of all the... Uh, because honestly, like, of all your public bathrooms, most McDonald's, at least around here, their bathrooms are pretty well kept. Yeah. Like, they're usually reasonably clean. Some poor employee in a polo shirt has to go in, like, every half hour and make sure nobody's vomited and, like... Like, take it out on the gas station bathroom. You'd be doing everyone a favor. Oh, <laughs> uh, because she's... I mean... Yes, people are start mentioning possible meth lab. This is one. This is one of those portable, easy meth labs that go into someone's bathroom and it, like a public bathroom to make this shit. That that's, they find in like a Walmart once a month. Yeah, that's not inconspicuous. No, because people will smell something coming from the bathroom. And wait, no, it's a McDonald's. So we were at we were at the Goth Club Saturday night. Oh, uh, oh god! And there was this like six foot tall six foot three jersey girl in front of me who was like totally dressed for a different club and we're waiting in line to get in the bathroom and the, they're taking forever in there whoever's in there is taking forever and this chick is losing her shit like she has threatened to pee on the floor in front of me her friend has distracted her by taking several like sexy posed photos whatever she's losing her mind and she's like banging on the door she's like what the fuck are they doing in there and i'm like do you do you not smell the pot because i do <laughs> i know exactly what they're doing in there they're either smoking pot or sacrificing a skunk it's a golf club so it could go either way could go either way that, that is a thing we do and like I don't even know how long later these two like four foot tall super gothed out girls with like the manic panic black and about 15 pounds of eyeliner each come out and like super bitchy pass aggressive like oh please go ahead and i'm like i, I don't want to see a fucking fight here like just yeah so it's it's kind of a perfect cover of mcdonald's bathroom yeah be like you smell something coming from there it's just like well either they're making meth or there's a special on big macs so, but they're usually pretty clean. <laughs> I'm just saying. But this, 
Damn. Blowing up the McDonald's bathroom. Don't do that. <sighs> Next up, we go all the way to uh, Crimea for this one. Where? Crimea. Oh. Near Russia. And it, never let it be said that uh, asshole drivers are exclusively an American problem. Because they're not. And I think we're all going to get a little schadenfreude out of this one. Let me get the video. Because we got video. Oh, yes. We got video. Let, let's get video. Where's the video? There it is. And here you Why go. are all the super goth people short? <laughs> they're not. You're short? Me and the Two girls in the bathroom sample. Someone on here said it. Oh, someone well, on the internet said it. Oh, hardcore goth I've known has been less than five feet tall. Yeah, that's not okay. <laughs> anyway, here's a video from Crimea. Here you go. It's a ferry pulling up to the docks. You see there. And uh, one driver was a little anxious to get off the ferry. Oh, yes, no. <laughs> oh, no. An impatient driver takes an unexpected bath when the boat they're traveling on is found not to be docked. <laughs> the port in Crimea. Video shows. <laughs> <laughs> And then you're gonna get hit by the boat, though. No, Is they're okay? they're fine. They're fine. They're just stupid. <laughs> um, an impatient driver takes an unexpected bath. Video shows a large ship slowly making its way to land, preparing to dock as passengers wait patiently beside their cars. Out of nowhere, a moving vehicle starts making its way to the boats, making its way to the boat's exit, falls to the watery space remaining between the vessel and land. Verified video supplied. Um, it's thought to have occurred on the uh, Protoporus 4 ferry vessel. Same reports from the publication Kirsch believe there was just one person in the vehicle and they were unharmed. The vehicle is also said to have been salvaged from the water after emergency divers and rescuers seen. Because I've taken ferries a lot. I used to take the ferry from college to home and back and you take the car on and you don't you don't fuck with, because, yeah, it looks like you're there, and you're not. Like, you don't do shit until they tell you to do shit. It says, it's Jed in the channel says, them Duke boys done done it again. Now, <laughs> although one of the idiots on the ferry did direct me right into an iron that exploded my tire. But... No, but this, this you, 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 we've all been there. We've all been on the interstate, and it's backed up. Yeah. There's And then there's one motherfucker who gets on yeah. the shoulder and, like, tears down the road. And you're just waiting. Back when I drove a Buick tank, I was the asshole that would ride two wheels in the shoulder and two wheels in the lane just to stop that motherfucker. Because my car was like six feet wide. And I just let him sit behind me and honk. And I'd be like, what? What's the matter? What? What's wrong? Yeah, there's traffic. I know it sucks. Now I drive a fucking Honda Fit and I can't fuck with it. <laughs> I'm not big enough. But I really love bullying assholes when I drove uh -huh. a fucking yacht. This is one of those moments we've all seen those drivers and no one, no one on that boat was sitting there going, oh no, that poor guy. Really? You don't deserve to die for that. He didn't die. He's just stupid. I mean, I don't think his insurance is going to cover that. I don't know how car insurance works in Crimea. But I don't think they're going to cover it. I don't think Flo from Progressive is going to help you out, bro. <laughs> Like a good neighbor, stay far as... Oh, fuck you. Yeah. Oh, fuck you. Guy. No, I'm sorry, mate. Yeah, but that one guy, they've seen some things. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you, you just... Fuck this guy. I'm sorry. I, I, He's fine, so fuck him. I don't know. I still feel kind of bad for him, because, like... He's lucky the boat didn't crush him, first of all. She is. And that he didn't fucking drown. Like, but, you're an idiot, but I'm glad you're not a dead idiot. 
Speaking of, you're an idiot, but I'm glad you're not a dead idiot. <laughs> Humanity! Yep. Let's go to San Francisco for this one. Somebody chalk it up on the board. It happened again. Teen jumps out of plane's emergency exit onto San Francisco tarmac. Don't do that. San Francisco International Airport. A teenage passenger in a flight that landed at San Francisco International Airport Tuesday left the plane through an emergency exit and has been detained. Um, 17-year-old male U.S. citizen on a Copa Airlines flight from Panama City Landed at the airport, left the aircraft through the overwing emergency door, jumping down to the tarmac. Plane was waiting. That's a long drop. Plane was waiting. Longer drop than it looks like. Plane was waiting to taxi to its arrival gate when the teen opened the emergency exit and jumped out of the plane. Detained by a member of a construction crew on the tarmac, it's later taken into police custody. Ah, <sighs> teen was not injured. Actions. Uh, did impact arriving flights at the airport. So. Like, you're not getting where you're going any faster. No, because you're going to the little room and they're, they're taking out a glove and snap. Would we get a cavity search for that? From Panama City well, to America? Yeah. And you jump out of the plane. But well, you got through security the first time. Yeah, but they're at this point they're pretty. They're gonna be like, okay, does this guy have cocaine in his butt? Let's find out. I know you think. Like, here's the thing, everybody. I know we all think that we are the single most important sentient being in the world, and everybody else are just NPCs in our video game. Grady certainly so thinks thing, that. Don't fuck yourself, no. Just no, you're not more important than anybody else. If you're late for something, you should have just managed your time better, says me, and I'm late for fucking everything. Like, no. Just fucking deal with it. Like everybody else does. I just, it, because the, the first thing that happens is if you try to get off the plane in an unusual manner and you're coming from outside the country, that's a little suspicious. Yeah, that's conspicuous. That's one of those red, those things we call a red flag. They they don't they don't like when you do that kind of thing. They're, they they very much have... like Black Widow said. First rule of being on the run is don't run, walk, act natural, don't draw attention to yourself. And you know Bye. this. This was a Stop. hey y'all watch this. This had to be because it's seventeen. Seventeen. You're a dumb shit. I the they found to interview is eleven. <laughs> was, was there anybody of legal age on this plane? <laughs> Were there no actual grown ups on the plane? <laughs> Maybe that's why the seventeen year old jumped off. Maybe it was a bunch of fucking unsupervised minors. <laughs> I, it, uh, it, I. When I was a kid, I did stupid shit all the time, but not stupid shit that would get me arrested. Well, that you know about, but seriously. You use one of your water gun toys to shoot like lighter fluid at somebody? Oh no, no. your cousin did that to you. Right, right, right. My cousin did that to me. Turned my He-Man Cobra Con action figure to a flamethrower. No. Yeah. What are you saying? Oh, you're, I hear you laugh. <sighs> so, next up, lots of us have actually, I know I've done this, just idly done this, sat and thought about what would be the perfect heist. Just the back of your mind pulling off the perfect crime. I don't think I have. Never? Really? No. I mean, Dan goes to sleep watching Forensic Files, so... I guess I listen to those and I'm like, you you kept those shoes, you moron, but. Well, the guy in our next story, uh, from New Jersey, no less, thought he had <laughs> nailed the perfect crime. Unfortunately, he was an imbecile. 
Security guard allegedly stole $100,000 on his first day of work. Wow. Okay. Security officer at a cash vault and armored car company was accused of stealing $100,000 from the business on his first day of work. Larry Brooks, 19, of Elizabeth, who works for Garda, was arrested after the theft uh, was captured by company surveillance cameras. Was charged with theft for allegedly taking carefully. Yeah, uh, was charged with theft for allegedly taking the cash Tuesday evening. Security officers reportedly found eighty-five thousand nine hundred dollars in a vehicle parked in Elizabeth before police were alerted. Um, there is no definitive conclusion of what happened to the remaining stolen <laughs> money. Because he spent what fourteen one fourteen thousand dollars in one afternoon. I mean, I could do that. <laughs> but I feel like you'd find the stuff I spent it on pretty easily. <laughs> yes. It'd be a hell of a lot of nail polish. And really? Because you know, too. this guy was thinking, this will be the perfect crime. They'll no. never know it was me. They watch that shit pretty closely. Yeah, it's 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 not... This is a job where they carefully monitor what you do and how you interact. It's not like, you know, being a cop or something. <laughs> Nobody's watching them. They always get those Garda trucks and they make me chuckle because that's what they call the police in Ireland. Garda? Yeah. It's spelled differently. But that always makes me chuckle. But shit, they they don't just put you in with the money and say, have fun. No, no. They don't just like not count. They don't just like haphazardly throw stacks of money in a truck and wave you off. Like, <laughs> that's not how that works. They're monitoring that shit because yeah. it's money. Because it's a lot of money. Yeah. It's, it's, not, like, it's not like you grab a bag with 100000 like, they're not going to miss this. They don't ever miss it. They got all these others. I mean, what's one? They're not going to miss them. Like, no. if it was like $10, that's probably like... You know, work in retail, like, if you close out your drawer, like, $5 is usually, like, the margin of error where, like, you don't get written off. So, like, on a truck of that size, maybe, like, give or take $5, $10. dollars hundred grand, yeah, they're, they're going to miss that, bro. Our last story this week. This hurts me because after doing this 17 years... You know what? I kind of feel a little responsible for this sort of shit. Have you been this... doing this bit for the whole 17 years? In some form, yeah. Even when it was in character? Yeah. Is that why you said mean things about my character? No, that was a different one. <laughs> so, so, yeah, our next story, I feel a little, I hold a little bit of responsibility for this. In fact, all of us Anyone who does this YouTube stuff, it's like, what was it? Uh, Mara Wilson was talking about this on Twitter the other day uh, about how the the kids doing it now. There is no one trot to there to say, "Hold up, pull it back a second. That might be a stupid idea." Also, this is Florida. Florida authorities, man robs bank, then gets naked and throws money. Fort okay. Lauderdale. Authorities in Florida say they arrested a man who robbed a bank, stripped naked, ran down the street, throwing stolen money. A spectacle he somehow thought would jumpstart his career as a comedian. Really? Instead, the FBI says 25-year-old Alexander Sperber is charged with bank robbery. Federal complaint says the man told authorities he parked his car at the bank, made a gun motion from his hand, and demanded money from the teller, who gave him about $4,700. Officials say a red dye pack exploded, staining his clothes and a cast on his left wrist. The Sun Sentinel reports Sperber was taken to the hospital and found to be coherent and uninjured. It's unclear if he has an attorney. 
I'm pretty sure this is how George Carlin got his big break. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But I think I read somewhere. It's not like you can just tell the police. No, no. It's a prank, bro. No, I was just funning. No. It, no, no. It's just, it wasn't for real, though. I didn't really rob the bank. I ironically robbed the bank. Yeah, but, yeah, no. No, that's not how that works, honey. It's, it's like, if they were in on it, that would be different. If they, like, if you, like, went in ahead of time and were, like, act really scared and give me, like, a bag of Monopoly money, like, somebody at the bank would probably get fired, but yes. nobody would go to jail. No, no. You, 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 you robbed a damn bank. You did. You really, you did that. You can't just go, no, this was not for real robbery, though. This was comedy robbery. Therefore, no it doesn't count. This is, this is no, what the. No backsees on the bank robbery. This is what the whole YouTube thing has done. Because you, th there's no one to say I no. I was this more on like Jackass. Eh, but even Jackass, even they have stuntmen, insurance, a right, network. I can't tell you that. <laughs> they just staple their balls to their leg and tell you they they're cool. Well, you that that's YouTube now. They they don't know they they don't even know they need like. Managers, agents, insurance, lawyers. They don't know. They just go out and do the fucked up shit. And they're like, hey, I'll be famous now. Hooray. You will. For being the dumbest ass in the prison. Yeah. You're going to jail. Wait, say, say insurance again. What? Say say the word. Like, progressive and Geico sell what? Insurance. Okay. Why? Well, say, say it. You said it like he does the first time. Insurance. Insurance. <laughs> Where the emphasis is on the first syllable and it's only got two. <laughs> All right, Mona Lisa Vito. <laughs> <laughs> Insurance. And you said it like that the first time. Then you corrected it. Long Island. Anyway. Yeah, that the first thing we've learned this week is you can't commit crime ironically. No, you cannot. It's still crime. I mean, you can, but they're going to put you on in jail for real. Yeah, th there is no ironic jail or <laughs> ironic court. It's... I mean, there is ironic jail, but we call it Brooklyn. <laughs> And as I understand it, it involves a lot of avocado toast for some reason. <laughs> um, we've learned that if you think you have the perfect crime, you probably don't. You, you, probably. Because the very fact that you think you have the perfect crime. You need, hubris. You need a team. Three tragedies. Hubris. It's a killer. Do you have a team? Do you have George Clooney? Do you have Brad Pitt? No, you don't have the no. perfect crime. Do you even have Elliot Gould? No, you don't, because he's dead. Don't get a shovel. No. Anyway. Leave Elliot Gould alone. <laughs> We've learned that if you jump out of the plane, they're not going to be cool with that. Nope. Unless it's your job to jump out of the plane. Is it your job to jump out of the plane? No, they're not going to be cool with that. Like, they're not going to, they're not going to, like, let you just leave early because you figured it out. They're not going to be like, well, I guess he beat the system. Give him his bags. No. We've learned that bad driving is a universal thing the world over. It's the universal language. Asshole drivers. Elliot Gould is alive? He is? Oh, my gosh. I'm so sorry. My bad. <laughs> I'm sure Elliot Gould is sitting at home going, wait a minute, she thinks I'm dead? What the? That bitch. You better apologize, damn it. I'm very sorry, sir. Because we all know Elliot Gould is a huge fan of my shit. Huge fan. <laughs> We've learned. Somebody tweeted at you. 
You never know. He might be. We've learned that you don't. If, why would you blow up McDonald's? If you if you're going to do something illicit in the McDonald's bathroom, it's not going to go unnoticed. No. It's not like you know you you found the secret place no one's paying attention to. It's there's someone's going to be in there. They have a little checklist on the on the wall. Like seriously, every hour or so, somebody's got to check on. It. Don't blow up the McDonald's bathroom. It's not there anymore. And finally, we've learned tonight that most of us have better operational security when it comes to our internet than the fucking White House. Yeah. Oh. Awesome. Well, I mean, we used to have Sean Spicer tweeting his fucking Twitter password (laughs) once a day. Like, it's not new. They've always been fucking morons. Do you know what we call that, Tara? Stupid? Stupid? The good old days. I know. A simpler time. 